Hi there. My name is Dan. And I'm Susie, and together, together we're a doozy. And we are so glad to be back with you today. Welcome back to In Gear Part 2 from us. We're just talking about the gears. Mm. The gears are moving. We've got the past, the present, the future. Did you we're going to hear more. <laughs> we got the past, the present, the future. There you go. You know that it's going to be so good. We're going to hook things to those three gears once again today. That's right. Hey, I want to take you uh, to a, a story you probably all know well. It's David and Goliath. Oh, I love that story. Now, now remember what's going on here. Goliath is coming out every day. There's, there's the Philistines over here on this hill, and there, there are the children of Israel over here on this hill. Every morning, Goliath comes out, and he says something Similar to this. Hey, listen, guys. Hey, let's, you listen. Let's not have a battle here. You sound and send someone out to fight me. I'll fight them. And whoever wins gets everything. Well, this guy is 10 feet tall. <laughs> when, when He's everybody a big that, giant. The, the children of Israel would run back to their tents. Every day this would happen. Goliath comes out. There's a challenge. And the children of Israel run home. There was a need for someone to take a stand. Take well, a stand. One day, Firm stand. David shows up. Da, 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 a little David. Now, David, thank you for the sound effects. Uh -huh. David is the little brother. David's not a warrior. David comes only to see his brothers, to bring some food to them. But David has something that the other ones don't have. And that's faith. The children of Israel are, are in the midst of suffering. Day after day being taunted. Who? Oh, why doesn't God do something? Well, God is saying, why don't you do something? Well, David shows up. He picks up the, the, the stones and he takes a stand. He mm. goes out dun, 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 to dun. the children of Israel. He goes out to the battle line and he meets Goliath. Now, here's the interesting thing. He takes a stand and he moves forward. Stand and move at the same time? Same time. He takes a stand in his faith. I will stand in the midst of this suffering. But at the same time, he sees the enemy. He says, I, in the name of God, our God, the one that you have defiled, I am going to take you down. And he runs towards him. While he's rubbing, running, he gets the, uh, the sling. He does the sling. Stone goes. Now, I don't know what size of the stone <coughs> it was. That took down Goliath. But I imagine it Whoa. was like a cannonball. <laughs> That's a big stand to take right there. It was probably much smaller than this. But but this is like a cannonball that used to shoot out. Wow. And it it hit Goliath so hard, it knocked him down. The David was used by God to turn around the situation from suffering to move them forward. Today we're going to look at how do we stand in the midst of of our suffering. Well, when I think of stand, I think of standing in a river. I love nature, especially if there's trees and water. We love to kayak. But there's sometimes where we're in a river or a moving <laughs> body of water where if you do not get out and take your stand, it's an active movement. Take your stand. If you lift your feet up, you will be taken away by the current. True. Sure. So taking your stand, just like David with Goliath, it's so important for us to stand. And this is the message that we want to bring forth right now. You can stand in your suffering by moving three gears. We're back to our gears again. Gears. Do you remember the three gears? We're going to have it stand for the same exact thing. Our past, mm. our present. Oh, yeah. And our future. future. So I just want to um, have you look. The passage that we're looking at for this session is 1 Peter chapter 3 and a bit of chapter 4 as well. And so in, in 1 Peter 4.13, it talks about who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Mm. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asked you to give the reason for the hope. Hope. We were learning about hope the other, the other session 
that you have. Mm. And then it talks a little bit about suffering. And so as we're suffering, sometimes we suffer in our body. Sometimes we suffer in our mind. But we need to be clear-minded in our suffering so that we can pray. And so that we can love each other deeply. And don't be surprised when we have moments of suffering, it says in 1 Peter 4 verse 12. Don't be surprised at the painful trial you're suffering as though something strange was happening to you. But rejoice that you get to participate in the sufferings of Christ and be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Now and understand verse, this. Verse 19 is our key. So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. So here's the thing. It isn't if you suffer, it's when you suffer. You may have seen me just disappear there for a second. I had to go get a cough drop because my throat is hurting. Suffering. There are times in our life that things don't go the way that we wish they would. It may be because of our faith. Sometimes, like you see the clock here, it just seems like oh, everything around us has just stopped. But there is hope. There is hope. Things are going to move again. And sometimes... We just need to trust mm -hmm. that God is there to move us forward. Romans chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 talks about we have to suffer, mm. have perseverance, and that will grow our character and that will give us hope. We were, we've been talking about hope as well, but in our suffering, we can stand by moving those three gears, past, present, and future. So let's first look at the past. The past gear. We need to remember. We, we, we so are quick to forget. God's done incredible things. But we got to stand. Way back here in our life. Way back here. He did incredible things. Remember. We got to remember that. Remember. So what are the lessons that we learned mm. from being in the suffering of the past? I don't know about you, but many times for me, when I'm in the midst of the suffering, I don't like pain. Do you? Most of us don't. When I'm in the middle of suffering, I am not learning those lessons. But when we remember the past, it gives us a bit more perspective on our standing right now. Because God is faithful. So what we have to do is tell the stories of his faithfulness. Tell us a story. The stories are so important. The Bible are a group of stories that encourage us. There are stories from your church and stories from your family. Just the other day I was telling a story about my shoulder. Now you may not know this, but several years ago I was in South Africa and a baboon, a big, big monkey got oh, oh, into our car. Oh, 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 oh. That's my impersonation and of a monkey. In the midst of the... the Get, trying to get him out of the car, he totally dislocated my shoulder. So my shoulder was totally pulled out of its socket. And for seven years, I suffered. I suffered with great pain. Now, I'm glad that the baboon did not eat me. Okay? <laughs> me now, too. I would not be telling the story if he had. But the story was that because he came into the car, because he was, he was very violent, I, I lost uh, movement really in my arm and my shoulder that's a pain for seven years and on thanksgiving day oh probably 10 years ago at least maybe 12 years ago i was at susie's brother's house and i was telling the story about the baboon like i had so many times people always ask me tell stories about the baboon at the end of it susie's brother said hey you know what that story needs to end I'm like, what do you mean he says I'm going to pray that your shoulder is all better. And it's like, oh yeah, we've prayed for seven years, but yeah, go ahead. He simply touched it and said, in the name of Jesus, shoulder, be healed. Yeah. And you know what? Never again did my shoulder hurt. It was like that. That's a story. That's a story from the past that God has been faithful. So the next time I hurt myself, one month ago, <coughs> I fell on this shoulder. It's still hurting me, but I'm trusting God to be my healer because in the past, he mm. showed up. So for me, when I'm thinking of a past story, I think of living <coughs> in Poland. And 
What was suffering for me was learning the Polish language.、Mm. It's tough. They say for English speakers, native English speakers, Polish is the second most difficult language to learn, right after Japanese. And so here we were living in Poland, and I wanted to connect with people who live there. I love people, and I needed to speak to them. And so it felt like suffering to learn the language. But when I got a mind shift, when I when I look at it now, I was like, wow! Every drop of learning the language was worth it for the connection. And there's something that happens in our brain when we when we're trying to think of about things, and it's called neuro pathways. It's like roads in our brain, and the way we think repeatedly, we make. Easier neural pathways, ways for the electrons to join, join the message to get the message across, and it becomes like a really wide highway. Well, what happens when we we think of our suffering of the past as traumatic? We've got two sides of our brain. We've got the right side, and we've got the left side. And the right side is is what's called the creative side of the brain. It's kind of big picture. It's fluid. The left side of the brain is details, specific details. Well, what happens when we have trauma or tough times in our life? We usually store those traumas down in the bottom right of our brain, and in that place of the brain, it's where creativity happens as well. But in that place of the brain, things are fluid, as if the suffering is still happening. And what happens is through story and through being together with people that help us tell the story, we can move it from the bottom right up into the upper left in the prefrontal cortex of our brain by making that one solid memory、hmm. and standing strong in what we learned from that from that experience. Not that we're still learning; we're still in the middle of it. But we learn from that, and we put it in this place where we can remember, and we can thank God for who He was in that place, and that helps us in the present. So we've gone from the past into the present, and the present reality is we need to show up. It's so easy to sit back and let someone else show up, but in the present, if you are alive today, you are in the plan of God to make a difference in this world. Today, so you can stand in your suffering by moving the three gears. The first is the past, where we remember. The second is the present. The gears have stopped again. Did you notice? Oh, it needs help. We work with yeah, people around the world.、Gears. We work with people around the world who find themselves sometimes stuck. Mm. The machine has stopped.、Yeah. We have something called the fully alive revolution, and we have people in their twenties, in their thirties, in their forties that join us to to see how do we move from stuck to motion. It's going. How do we get、moving. back in to motion?、Uh, we we have a lot of teaching that helps people get started again. It, it reminds me of this. I, I like money. I don't know if you like money, but I've got a dollar bill here. Now a dollar bill is is not a lot of money, but it's it's certainly better than no money. I love the dollar bill because some of the designs on it. I love I love the the eagle. I love the eagle. It's it's just to me the artwork that goes in this is incredible. But still the value is just one dollar. In the present we invest in what we have right now. Now all of us are like, but I want the future. I want to know what the future is. I want to grow. I want to be so much better in the future. But we invest what we have right now. So I'm going to take this one dollar. Okay, just want you to notice one dollar, and I'm simply going to fold it because what I want to talk about is showing up in the moment. We invest in the moment. We invest in right now, not someday, not when I'm older, when I'm when my parents age, or or when I get that new job. No, right now we invest. In the present, we show up, and what we find is because we do that, God takes us because we show up, and He grows it. See that? That's a twenty. I like a twenty much、wow. better than a ten. But that comes from showing up. 
And that's what we try to do with the Fully Live Revolution, is we take people right where they are and help them see, this is where you're standing right now, but where do you want to go? And we help them move to that place, fully show up, even in the midst of their suffering, so they can move forward fully alive. One of the things we're working on this week is what we call a Caterpillar Change Tool. And let me tell you just a little bit about it because it's all about mindsets of where we are right now. If you are suffering and you need some help taking your stand, the Caterpillar Change Tool might be a good one for you. Because if you know in the metamorphosis process, the Caterpillar is the one who's all self-focused, eat, 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 self-focused eating, and they're thinking about me, 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 me. Well, that when if my mindset is on me and being stuck, then I am never going to fly like the butterfly. Mm. And so the Caterpillar Change Tool is a series of questions that helps you change your mindset from being stuck on yourself and limited to actually taking your movement stand and flying like a butterfly. Now, if you're interested in that, in a tool to help you change your mindset from a stuck mindset to a free mindset, I want to invite you to send us an email at connect at doozy.com and you, you'll see that right there on your screen and just say that caterpillar tool and we would be glad to send you that caterpillar new mindset tool if you send us an email request because it really should, it's a tool to help you move from the present mindset of suffering into thriving so we've talked about the past We've talked about the present. Now we're going to look at the future. Now, I just want to tell you, a few moments ago, if you were watching, you would have seen Susie leaning over the railing, telling our dog to stop it. <laughs> Wonka, stop it. Now, you met our dog yesterday, but Wonka has this toy that I, I took a piece of wood and I put this plastic around and I nailed it. And so he cannot, he cannot get that, that toy free. And he tries. Every single day. Now, I would love to say, now listen, the future is, it's still going to be there. But he gets so frustrated that he lives just in the present. Why can't I get this? <laughs> we did not even remember that yesterday he couldn't get it. Tomorrow he's not going to get it. I have made it impossible for him. See, or so we're, you think. <laughs> we're different than dogs. Yes. We can see because of what God's done in the past. He is faithful in the present and he's going to move us into the future. Just tell you one more time about David and Goliath. Yeah. Before David took down Goliath with a stone to the forehead, this is what he said. He said, Goliath, today I will kill you. And when I kill you, I'm going to cut off your head with your sword. And I am going to take that head. He told them exactly what he was going to do. He told the future. Because he knew God of the past. Yeah. He knew what was going to happen, and he proclaimed it. He spoke that out. We, we should not be afraid to say the God of the past is going to be active in our future. This is part of the gears. The gears are that maybe God is here, and because God is moving, we're moving. Because we're moving, there's going to be some things in the future that move. And because we're showing up now and in the future, there's going to be some ripple effects to others that we don't even know about. Love that. We show up like David and say, this is what God has done. And I'm going to keep walking in it because he's going to do those kind of things in the future. So you can stand in your suffering by moving the three gears. The gears of the past that help us remember and make new neural mm. pathways by remembering properly. Where was God? And what happened to me? And this gives us fuel for the present right now, right in the middle of the rope. And in that present, we have our people with us. We continue to change our mindset. And then into the future, who are the people that support us to be able to take our stand in the midst of suffering? Whatever kind of suffering that is, God is always with us. 
but sometimes we need people to help us in that process as well. And that brings us to our declaration of today. And here's a declaration I want you to remember. If you want to write this down, get your paper and pencil out right now because this is something you need to take because suffering is ahead of you. I can tell you right now, there will be suffering in your future. Not if, but when. There's suffering maybe in your life right now. Here's the declaration. I stand in my suffering. Remember the foot. Stand. I stand in my suffering. There is more to life than this. This moment is not going to define you. There is more to life than this. My shoulder being taken out by a baboon, not going to define my life. Not knowing my language in Poland did not define my life. I was able to suffer through and come out with the bonus of connection. So what we do is this. The gears of life tell us that we stand in our suffering because life, there is more to life, much more to life than this. The God that was present in the past is present in the future, and he will pre be present in the future. We need to make sure, did I say that right? Past, present, future. Look at my foot just walking there <laughs> into the future. We need to stand, and in our standing, we need to move forward. Isn't that interesting how standing and moving, how, how can you stand and move at the same time? It is an action. A lot of it is in our mind. A lot of it is in the situations where we put ourselves and how we process our experiences from current to past and God was there. These people were there. God wants to use this because our suffering will take us to hope and hope will never disappoint us when we have our hope in God. So may God bless you on the journey. If there's any way Susie and I can help you, please contact us at connect at doozy.com. We have a lot of resources on YouTube. If you're a YouTube person, go on Doozy Potter. There's stuff there to help you not only stand in your suffering, but move forward. You're part of a great gear system. Yep. When you show up, it activates many other things. That's what God has in plan for you that you're part of this great story that's unfolding. So thanks so much for spending this time with us. See you soon. God bless. Bye.